If you know me in real life, you're probably about to ask, Bruh, are you really going to be reacting to the Saddle Club? Or are you just... horsing around? In America, in the early 2000s, we had about two different types of TV series. We had American and American. The Hollywood machine made sure that every single minute of airtime was monopolized by Hollywood television entertainment that was produced in Los Angeles County. They did not like sharing the profit with foreign-made television programs. Fortunately for those Americans who had digital cable, we were able to watch The Saddle Club on Discovery Kids and see these kids talking in this strange accent from this foreign outback land. Saddle Club is based off of a children's novel series. I've got the first book right here. Horse Crazy was the first book in the series by Bonnie Bryant. And in the book series, it actually takes place in a town in Virginia, whereas with the TV series, takes place in some ambiguous land between Canada and Australia. Let's take a look at the first episode. First episodes are never my favorite, but you've got to start somewhere. Because it usually takes a little while, takes a couple episodes for the actors to kind of get comfortable with the roles and fall into character. And plus, especially when you're dealing with a lot of child actors, they're not the most experienced people. I can't really criticize their acting because, you know, they're kids, they don't have a lot of experience. Uh, but, you know, it can be kind of a little bit more cringy to get through the first couple episodes. But this was a really great ensemble cast, and the cast is really part of what uh, made this show what it is. I think it's a fun family show, too, so you don't have to be a kid to enjoy it, just because the acting is so great from everyone involved. Um, the writing, too. But let's let's go ahead and take a look. And one of the things about this series, it had a really nice cinematography as well. I don't know what the budget was. I expect it was pretty big being a co-production between Canada and Australia. But you can see these nice tracking shots and crane shots. Evie, the lesson starts in 20 minutes. Not far, just at the driveway. So this is some of the worst dialogue in the whole series. I'm glad we're getting this done and over with. That's an ugly habit. That's an ugly habit. Lisa's mom is my least favorite character in the whole series. I mean, people hate on Veronica, but like, Veronica's funny. You know, this, 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 Mrs. Atwood has no sense of humor. And she's making her daughter a nervous wreck. <laughs> like seriously, I don't think there's a one time in this whole series, well maybe towards the end, when I've ever seen Mrs. Atwood make a joke. You want to meet the right kind of people, don't you? Her mom is just such an arrogant. Mom, look out! the right kind of people. You almost killed us! We came out of nowhere! You shouldn't be riding in the driveway. Mom, you should learn how to drive! <sighs> yeah, lady, learn how to drive. Great first impression. Now they hate me. You could have said you were sorry. I beg your pardon? Nothing. <laughs> Keep away from those two, Lisa. <laughs> So, inexperienced novice rider Lisa Ratwood is about to spend her first day of riding lessons at Pine Holler. Eleanor Atwood. And of course the overprotective helicopter parent Mrs. Atwood wants to stick around for the lesson to supervise. Make sure nobody has any fun. <laughs> yes, but I like to supervise. But the smooth-talking Max politely convinces her to plow off so that Lisa can gain some independence. Well, I, I'm not oh, sure... Oh, she'll be fine. Let's go, Lisa. So Max assigns Lisa to Patch for the day, a push-button pony who requires apparently absolutely no skill or experience. Push-button? Yes, you could blow a bomb off and you wouldn't even blink. I think you're going to like Patch. In the book series, Veronica is described as a spoiled Italian-American girl. Also, I'm pretty sure in the book, it's been a while since I read the book, but I'm pretty sure in the book, Veronica and Lisa aren't strangers. They go to the same private school, so they're both kind of upper class, whereas in the books, Carol and Lisa both go to, like, a, a general public school. There's his tack. Go ahead. <laughs> you gotta admire Veronica. Always find her ways to get out of doing work. What about Patch? Better hurry up. Quite ingenious, really. Hey, Christy, do you want to sleep over at my house tonight? Red. And Christy has the cutest crush on Red. I don't remember Red from the books or or the Christy character. I'm gonna need to research this. 
Um, but I like her character here. It's good for Veronica to have a sidekick here. But it's... <laughs> Christy is such a great character, too, because she's so dumb. She's like Veronica and Christy are the comic relief of this whole series. Every time they're on, I'm just laughing. I can't help it. And Max announces that the Mountain Trail Overnight is coming up soon. This was a big issue in one of the books. I can't remember if it was the first one because Stevie Lake couldn't uh, couldn't afford to go. It was going to be like this expense that she had to find ways to work and save up the money or convince her parents to pay for it. I can't remember. It was a mess. Uh, I think, thankfully, they skip over a lot of that in the TV series. Actually, I get the impression that the writers, even though this TV series is really well written, I get the impression that the writers just sort of maybe skimmed some of the cliff notes of these books and then just kind of took it in whatever direction they wanted to. I mean, they followed some of the series story arcs, but they really kind of took the material and ran with it and made it their own and made it unique, which is really cool. So you can't really compare the books to the TV series too much because they're very, very different. She looks nervous. <laughs> so apparently, I don't know if this is hunt seat or what they're doing. I don't know enough about horse riding to know exactly what they're doing, but they're practicing jumping. And for some reason, they have to jump over a brick wall, which doesn't seem like the safest exercise if you're not able to get your horse to do it. But Carol's having trouble with that, apparently. But Carol makes it, and Lisa cheers her on, despite the row that they had earlier. I wish I could jump like that someday. She really lays it on thick. It's okay now. But just when you think Lisa's starting to get back into their good graces, Lisa's mom calls her up on her 2001 flip phone and disrupts the whole lesson and terrifies Comanche. Comanche basically throws Stevie off her horse right over the wall. Turn that off. What a poorly behaved horse. Turn it off. I'm Would a horse really do that if they heard a cell phone ring? Would they really just literally just throw you off? I, I mean, she was all the way across the riding rink. Uh, anyway. Cell phones have no place in the ring. And now Lisa's in trouble. It seems like she didn't even know you weren't supposed to have a cell phone in the ring, but anyway. So Lisa tries to apologize later, but Stevie's having none of it. Don't talk to me. So of course Lisa feels even worse. Fortunately, Veronica's around to console her. Don't worry about her, Lisa. Some people do. I love Veronica. Veronica is really my favorite character in the series. I know people hate her, but I think she's just misunderstood. And she's really smart in the TV series. I don't remember her being quite so clever in the book series. And I think the writers of the TV version recognized that they had a really amazing actress that they were working with, so they gave a little more to the character, a little more depth. But yeah, Veronica has the best roasts. Wah, wah. Learn to hold on next time. Ooh, Max, Lisa scared my horsey. I love it when she makes fun of people, and it's just a little banter. I feel like the Saddle Club are a little bit just too sensitive. If they would just kind of banter, they might have a good time playing around, but Veronica and the Saddle Club are just too different. It is not going to work out with them. They can get along, they could be civil, but she'd never fit in with the Saddle Club, which I think deep down she knows that, and so she puts on this arrogant facade uh, to make herself feel better about that. I'm not going to lie, she is pretty nasty in this first episode and in some of the others, but let's continue. So, since Stevie has snubbed Lisa, Lisa's left with uh, only Veronica to hang out with. And then we find out that Veronica doesn't even have her own cell phone yet. Everyone has a cell except me. Even her. But with her direct and assertive communication, she manages to convince her mother to get one for her. I want a cell phone! But not until later. Until then, she's stuck with her pager. Isn't that great? So then Lisa comes back into the stable with Patch, and overhears Carol and Stevie talking trash about her behind her back. Oh, will these three ever become friends? Did you hear what happened in the lesson today? Yeah. And this is why I'm so bad at romance. Look at the role models that I had growing up. Christy and her terrible attempts at romance, but it's a lot of fun. So let's be honest, their lounge looks so cool. They've got like soda, Danish butter cookies, mustard and tomato sauce for some reason. I don't know if they're going to make hot dogs or something, but they got a whole spread. And by the way, they never explain this in the TV series, but in the book, Stevie's name is Stephanie, but she hates being called Stephanie. And I feel like the writers definitely didn't pick up on that or use that, because if they really wanted for Veronica to get under Stevie's skin, she'd call her Stephanie. Oh, that would set her off. In the books, that would set her off. But they never explain that in the TV show. 
So in the lounge, Veronica's trying to get Lisa to be friends with her, and oh, she has such a dominant personality. But Lisa's literally daydreaming about Carol and Stevie and will not submit to Veronica's influence very easily. So because Christy's probably going to be fawning over Red the whole weekend, pretty much leaving Veronica on her own, Veronica tries to convince Lisa to come on the mountain trail overnight with her. And Lisa pretty much agrees to go, as long as Carol and Stevie are going too. I'd love to. So, Carol and Stevie are coming for sure, right? Fortunately, despite her timid and worried looking demeanor, Lisa doesn't give up on who she wants to be her true friends and takes the opportunity to apologize. I screwed up, but I'd never hurt you or Comanche on purpose. I can't believe my mum called right in the middle of a lesson. Mums are so lame. Yeah. Her mum died. Carol, I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this, is, this is better than I remember it. <laughs> She keeps trying every single effort she makes. She tries to connect with her and be like, oh, my stupid mom is just so lame. It's like, no, oh. her mom's dead. Here comes your new best friend. But she doesn't like Veronica. She likes you. Lisa, did you get my drink? Oh my gosh, look at that fierce look in her eyes. Did you get my drink? Let's just go. They're never going to be friends with you. You can suck up all you want, but they'll still hate you. She's like that evil voice you hear inside telling you that you're not good enough. See, that's part of Veronica. Veronica really has these, I think as arrogant as she acts on the outside, on the inside, she really does feel inferior. And I think the reason why she was telling that to Lisa is because that's what Veronica feels about herself. Inside, she's actually deeply insecure. And she feels that no matter what she does, the Saddle Club will never like her. Which is, uh, like, kind of sad for me, it's true. They're just too different, they'd never get along. All right. And there's Beethoven drinking out of the fountain. Did we ever see that dog there again? I'm not sure what inspires her to do this, if she thinks she's in some weird way sticking up for Lisa. But she decides to stick her own beeper on Stevie's horse. As if getting thrown off a horse once in one day isn't enough. So Veronica gets her new flip phone and tells Lisa about her psychopathic plan to call up her pager to spaz out Comanche while Stevie's riding her. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's really dangerous. I know. You can't! Regardless of whether she goes through with it or not, this is the most vindictive, reckless, and dangerous idea I think I've seen Veronica do in this entire series, right in episode one. And she tells Lisa, oh, if you tell anybody, then you... I'm gonna make sure you're not gonna go on the mountain trail overnight, as if she has some sort of say in that. But does Veronica think that nobody's gonna find her pager tucked into Comanche's saddle? I think for the most part, Veronica is far cleverer in this series. So this is a little bit out of character for her. Yeah, she can be a bully, but this is a bit extreme even for Veronica. But the good thing about Veronica being a crazy nutter in this episode is that it gives Lisa an opportunity to go and warn Carol and save her would-be best friends from certain doom. Please, Carol, you've got to trust me. Wouldn't it be more effective to go find Veronica than to ride all the way out and try to get Stevie? Right? Am I... Go get Veronica. Take, the, take her flip phone, and then she won't be able to... Anyway. I guess it's more dramatic this way. She must be a fast rider. Look at that evil glean in her eyes. They're really making her out to be a monster. She actually did. I don't remember her actually doing it. I think that's a grounds for dismissal from the stable, don't you? <laughs> and the plan didn't even work at all. Horse bucked a little bit, and then kind of calmed down on its own. What is that? And suddenly the horse is calm once again. And now they can all be friends. Thanks, Lisa. Oh, I'm surprised Lisa didn't get the blame for that one. That is nice that they were forgiving all, all at the end. <laughs> Veronica is so mad that they survived the incidents that she's just, her, dro her jaw just dropped. You were supposed to be dead. I thought I killed you. How are you alive? What was that? Why would they not tell Max about that? 
Veronica needs to not go on that mountain trail overnight. She needs to learn a lesson. Sounds like she hasn't had any discipline in her life. It might be good for her. Piper, were you trying to kill her? You are so finished at this I day. like how she doesn't deny it. She's just like... <laughs> were you trying to kill her? I'm talking to Max. She really thinks Max is going to side with her over this whole incident. Hmm. Yeah, she's a little smarter as the episodes go on. And slightly more sane. In Veronica's defense, I think this is the most evil that she's been in the entire series. But I would have liked to see her learn a little bit of a harder lesson at the end of this episode than just to have Stevie and Carol say, well, maybe we'll talk to Max. But they never do, do they? So thanks to a word from Carol and Stevie, Max now invites Lisa to go on the mountain trail overnight. And everyone's friends. <laughs> and while riding again unsupervised in the driveway, they come up with the rules for a perfect club. You have to be totally horse crazy. And you have to look out for each other. And they come up with the perfect name. What about the Saddle Club? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really cute song, and it's nice to see the little behind the scenes. Because you can see how they're all kind of friends in real life, too. Okay, that's it. So that was my reaction to the first episode of the Saddle Club TV series. Thank you for joining me on The Media Keeper. Isn't that great?